Okay. I think we're rolling. Looks like the camera's on. I wanted to do this cold start. Now, I know this will run. Uh, the way I know is because I tested the... the uh, I don't, some people call it a magneto, the coil or whatever. Uh, the carburetor's been cleaned. And those Makuni carburetors, it's one of the things... Uh, I, I like to discuss the, the worth, uh, the, the value of these mowers. Something like this, I'm going to ask $1,000 for it. Because I've got money in it, I've got tires in it. Uh, the motor did not need to be rebuilt on this one. It's mo a lot of them do, and they end up to be more money, and I have a hard time getting rid of them. They sit here maybe a year or two before somebody does break down. They, they see it on Craigslist, the marketplace, or whatever. And it, it's until somebody has enough brain power to realize what it's worth. I'm going to square this off so you can see where I go on the other side. And hopefully she'll fire. Uh, I had to play with the PTO switch the other day. That This didn't check out. This is bad. That's one of those rocker ones. So my next step that I discuss with people, when you have vintage stuff like this or a car, I'm going to run this till the motor gets hot. I'm going to go get my pan and I'm going to change the oil. Over there I'm doing the body, painting the body, and I've got a half-assed Happy the Clown deck there that I've got to straighten out. Or I'm just going to get another one. Um, that deck uh, had, a, had a few more issues than I really wanted to, to deal with on it. So people, when you're redoing this stuff, you got to really pay attention to detail. Like, this is going to get power washed. The deck is felt filthy. There's a lot of work in this. And when these jokers from the marketplace, I need, I, I'm need. i going to try to put this at head at height. I'm not really good with that. There we go. We clicked in. I'm going to try to put this in at my head height. Well, these jokers, I'll give you $500 for it. Y you know what? This stuff is not going to be available anymore. What they're making right now is going to be... If you're seeing mowers that are blowing your mind for $2,900 right now, for the larger ones, especially with the hydrostat, the foot pedal and all that, they're about $2,500 to $2,900 right now. That's going to climb up to about $5,000. If Yanmar takes over, I'm thinking they're... From what I've heard, Yanmar has taken over Briggs & Stratton. Um, Tecumseh parts are becoming... Uh, more available because Yanmar is getting together with China. Yanmar is actually Japanese, and part of the company's been located here in Michigan. They Yanmar has been making parts for Caterpillar and different people for years. A lot of people don't know that. I actually stumbled on that uh, through a friend of mine, and I researched a website where it said Yanmar Court makes this, that, the other thing. Uh, researching it, how many times before that, I, I, I pulled up nothing, a big nothingness. Yanmar is taking over, I believe, the Xmark brand, and perhaps they're going to bring back the Hustler. They're going to bring back some of the old names, but it's going to be three times the price of what it, even what it used to be. It was expensive back in the day. Now it's going to be really, really expensive. So the value of this stuff is going to jump way up there, especially if it works. And that's why I don't mind if it doesn't sell this year, it's not going to hurt me, because next year... Used mowers right now on Craigslist and different places, anything that works is non-existent, um, especially the deers. you got a lot of these deer models. They have those bad hydrostats in them and, and, and uh, regular transmissions that are, that are just total junk. They're on there for four or $500, and they look like they just came out of the box. Uh, Simplicity did it to themselves. Husqvarna did it to themselves. There's a lot of the big brands that, that those... Those rears, when you're pushing heavy grass with them 50, 60 inch decks, like I said, some of them, like the, what the hell was the one I looked at? It was, I think that was like a, a, a GT something, maybe a, maybe a, a 375 or something. It was a pretty big mower with a pretty big deck. It wasn't a 48. It was like a 56 inch deck, almost 60 inch. And the rear end was shot. The guy had it on there for uh, 400 bucks. Uh, come get it. 
you're going to spend another four or $500 rehabbing that rear end and whatever other problems it has and belts. You might as well throw a new belt in there. The mowers are five, six, seven years old, eight years old. And the belt might look like new, but it's not going to look like new. After two or three years, you're going to wish, well, you're going to wish you put another one on it, a new one, because then you're going to be ripping it all back down again. And some of those deers, the LT-155s on up, on up to those big big ones, those those belts, it, it takes a rocket scientist. It, it, it takes me, sometimes I got to go up on YouTube or I got to call deer itself. I got to call the service guy and a lot of them, they don't want to give you their secrets. Well, bring it up here. Well, no, no, I'm a shop here. I want to service this mower. Well, then they really don't want to talk to you. Sometimes you get click because those guys, they're making $15, $20 an hour, which I don't blame them. We, we all need a living wage, and I'm not even making near half that half the time. So when somebody says, well, I'll give you four or $500 for it, well, you have to you have to realize the mentality. Some of those people, they don't know they, they don't know how to fix it, and they don't know what you're spending on putting it back together. Uh, a lot of them, this was in relatively okay mechanical shape, Somebody really took care of it. I, like I said, there was wax all over some of the parts. Somebody really loved on this old girl. And as far as uh, inspection of the bore, when I opened it up, I took my little bore scope in there. It, it's like new inside and inside and out. And I'm talking even like sludge, the oil in the bottom of the motor. Uh, that's why we're ready to do what we're going to do. I went in through the dipstick tube, and I, I went. Uh, it's a little low, so I had enough to swim around in there. And then I got my little swizzle stick. I, I, I take a a coat hanger and I put a, a tape a piece of cotton on it and don't tape a big piece of cotton people if you're going to do my trick to see if you're going to bring any sludge out that tells me how long I've got to run and idle this motor if there's a lot of sludge in it I'm going to let it run a good 20 minutes especially in this weather it's kind of cool it was chilly I had a hooded sweatshirt on this morning when I started out but to make a long story short this thing survived surgery and it's putting that uh, that meatball uh, deck back together and I don't really like selling it to somebody like that for that price, but those decks are available. They're out there. There's a lot of deers that died because people didn't take care of them. The parts are really expensive. Even now, if you go through John Deere to get a new part, it's expensive. So a lot of those tractors, they were in relatively good shape, and so were the decks. It's just that you're, you're talking $200 for belts, $200 for labor for the belts, and whatever else it needs might, be, might have been. You end up with a $600, $1,000 bill. So people, they want to get their wallet out, they want to whip out that credit card and go feed the China. I'll just buy a, you know, I'll get one for, and then I can pay it off. You know, they can pay $150 a month. They don't have to come up with $600 or they don't have to put $650 of a service charge on their credit card. They just rather have a new mower. So you end up with these old relics that are better than those new mowers. These, these 172s, that's why I have one. It drives like a Cadillac. It's, it's, it's smooth. I, I, I regret putting those ag tires on it. I'm going to get another set of rear, rear wheels. I use those in the winter with chains here uh, when i got to pull firewood down. If I run short on firewood, I want to be able to pull it up, you know, put chains on it and the wheel weights on it and everything. But in the summer, I, I, I ruined the ride for the summer, so I really got to get summer wheels for it. But these drive so smooth, it's like floating on, you know, with the regular tires, it's like floating on air. But it's the worth and the value of these mowers, putting them back together. It needs belts yet, so I got another 50, uh, maybe $100 in this thing till it's complete, till I get another PTO switch. So, grand total, I have 500 in this already with the tires, the paint, PTO switch, the belt, uh, the purchase price of the mower. I have well over 500 in it. So, I'm not going to sell it for another 150 bucks. I'm not a crackhead. I don't need it. The other thing is I want to discuss some of the using some of these paints. A lot of people ask me what I use that matches the John Deere. That's it. A lot of you guys at home can do that. Uh, this paint's very hard to work with. It takes forever to dry, and it will run. If it's if you get a shady spot like I had over there, you're going to get a run. And you got to wait a week or two till this dries. This does not dry through and through, especially when it's uh, below 40 degrees at night. It goes down like the 30 up here. And uh, I've got to work on the rest of the yard for the week. So it's not going to hurt me to let that hood sit off the tractor or whatever. The body came out perfect, no runs or whatever. So I'll take the hood, let it sit in the shop three or four or five days. I'll get it, I'll scuff it down, I'll take the run out of it, and I'll reshoot the area where the run was, and that's about it. 
that's all you can do. This stuff is difficult to work with. It does take a lot of time. And so are the... Uh, the blacks, the safety yellows. This is another brand of paint I use. It's hard as hell to find it. Mostly your industrial. Granger will have it. Uh, and, and some of your uh, radiator shops, stuff like that. Your industrial shops. They'll have boxes of this stuff. And it's not all that bad. It's cheap. It's like five, six bucks a can, and it's the best paint you're going to buy. So, Rust-Oleum, eat your heart out. Uh, this is made by Sonor Martin. And uh, if anybody ever went and uh, painted cars back in the 80s and the 90s, uh, Sonor Martin was a, for it was a formidable brand. It still is, but it's hard as hell to get, even on the Internet. Because there's certain colors. Um, it's like a Centauri. If you've ever worked with a, with a DuPont Centauri, uh, the single stages or whatever, it's probably like two notches lower, maybe three notches lower than working with a Centauri. But you can get a real nice coverage out of it if you know how to mix it. The trick to, to Sonor Martin is the uh, catalyst. The hardener actually dilutes. It does a little bit of what the uh, reducer is. So guys like me, in my younger day, I tended to mix it too thin. What I should have done was put the hardener in first. I'm used to the way I was trained. Uh, in the, 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 the way I was trained through the military and some of the shops that I worked at, okay, like with a Centauri, you'll, you'll mix it down first and the catalyst actually makes it thicker. So you really had to mix them down. This was the opposite. The catalyst will make it thinner and then the reducer will make it even worse. So there are ways to work with paints. And this is one of, uh, this is one of the better paints, though, for, for spray paint. Uh, and it dries a little bit faster or a lot faster than that other stuff. This dries in about four to six hours. This other stuff, you won't be able to touch that till tomorrow morning, and you'll still probably put fingerprints in it. <coughs> but it takes about a full week, <coughs> week and a half in this weather, even if it's inside your shop. I don't paint inside my shop because I don't want my house stinking like that, and I, <coughs> the stuff sticks to <coughs> everything. And I've got paint all over my hands is why I'm gagging. It's not the taco truck. The taco truck is sleeping. He's running the generator. He's fine-tuning his taco truck. I expect the finest tacos that I've ever eaten out of that truck for putting up with it, that is. <coughs> My political message, Joe Biden, you got to go. You got to pack a hornets on your ass. I talked to uh, my, former, my former boys with 142nd Aviation. A lot of guys that got out that are very disgruntled, Joe. You've disgraced every man in Arlington Cemetery that lies there, that fought and died for this country. You're a communist chi -com puppet, Joe. Give it up. America hates your guts. You know it. That's why you won't go out there in public. Because if you do, I'm afraid one of those old boys, one of them's going to take your head off. So, I'm broadcasting to you from communist-occupied America right now. And let's hope the chi -com, uh let's hope Joe Biden uh, gets what's coming to him. I really do, Joe. I hope somebody takes you out and trounces your ass real good. Maybe for good. Lights out. You too, Kamala. And you too, Pelosi. Let's hope it's lights out. You people are a disgrace to my country, my Marine Corps, my Department of Defense, my beloved Navy. You people disgust me. And you disgust us Armed Forces veterans. You disgust us. Thank you for putting up with my messages, guys. That's my message.